Hey FishTube, Steven here, and I'm back with another tank tour, this time with a couple of community tank setups for the kids. Starting with my nine-year-old daughter Lillian's 20 gallon, it's a 20 tall, set up about 15 months ago. Sort of a whimsical theme here with my daughter's favorite mythical creature being the inspiration, and she chose all this stuff. Started out with just the fake plants, but as you'll see in upcoming videos, every aquarium in this house is a mandatory planted aquarium. In here we have water sprite and pearl wheat. I'm still working on getting the pearl wheat to establish and really just overall uh, balance the tank. But I have basically an endless supply of the stuff in other tanks. In fact, just look at the sheer volume of it. This all came from one pot of pearl wheat from Aquarium Co-op like 14 months ago. It's my favorite thing to carpet with, and damn, it's really becoming a problem. But as you can see, it serves as a floating plant quite well too. Now, fake plants aren't problem free, though here's a secret. Not too long ago before filming this, I replaced this one and this one, the silk plants. The first batch of them had to endure the diatom algae, the hair algae, and so on while the tank matured. I would do a very diluted bleach dip every few months to get the algae off. Now, the more plasticky plants have been resilient through these cleanings, but eventually the bleach washed out all the color and left behind a yellowish brown tint on those silk plants. Um, so since then, I've been breeding bristlenose plecos and put a couple of the offspring in here to hopefully keep the silk plants a little cleaner. Now, other fish in this tank are uh, Greenfire Tetra, a really nice, unique color on these. You don't see them as often as other Tetras uh, that are similar shaped, and they don't seem to like to die as much as, say, uh, Cardinal Tetras and Rummy Nose. We also got Platties, which have produced some fry over the past year, most of which I've either sold to individuals or traded in for store credit at my local fish store. This is a new pair selected from the colony that I've been breeding, so I'm curious to see what sort of mutts we get. The Sunset Honey Garamis are amazing, but just so shy, you really have to sneak up to this tank to see them before they hide. Maybe they don't like my face. Ah! Lastly, there's Pygmy Cories. A couple of Nerites nails thrown in there too. You know, I, I hear from a lot of well-respected fish tubers that Pygmy Cories are very social, swimming mid-column with other schooling fish. This hasn't been the case for me, I don't, I don't know why. I've had as many as 20 in a tank at once, and they always do the same thing. They swim around, scope out the tank for a day or two when they're first introduced, then they find their favorite spot, and disappear into it most of the day. Basic equipment here, um, Night Crew Light with a dimmer and a timer, uh, Aqua Clear 30, and a Tetra Whisper Pump for the air stones that run at night. And that's my daughter's tank. And now for something a little different. My six-year-old son, Zachary, loves dinosaurs, uh, which is pretty much a requirement for all six-year-old boys. So here's a prehistoric theme. I got a few easy plants for low or medium light to create this mass jungle effect. I trim them whenever I happen to notice it looking ridiculous. Lately, I've accumulated enough of the stems to actually sell on eBay. This stuff grows fast. So yeah, here's a volcano. Triceratops skull. Equipment is pretty much the same as my daughter's tank, just a slightly different Nycru light. Okay, the fishies in here. This is just a cold guppy. She's got a crooked spine, so she'll live pregnancy free in here for the rest of her life, I guess. Next are the cherry barbs. Uh, my favorite of this tank by far. Just bright freaking red and fancy as fuck. Speaking of cherries, check out all the cherry shrimp in here. I started with about a dozen in here and they didn't take long to form this colony. Surprising that the three zebra loaches in here haven't wiped out the whole population. Uh, the loaches have been in here for over a year. Not sure how happy they are because I don't get to observe this tank too often. I almost never see them except when I feed the tank. I'm thinking about moving them out of here to something roomier. I also really like the purple Harlequin Rasboras in this tank too. Peaceful and, and pretty and, and purpley and uh, poppin' fresh. Hard to find these lately, otherwise I'd add more. I started out with um, six, lost one randomly, uh, but I'd like to get the number up to at least eight. 
And it's not a complete community without Cory Doris. More like Cory Adorables. Okay, that about does it. Uh, if you like this tank tour, make the YouTube algorithm happy and like, comment, subscribe, sacrifice a goat in my honor, and whatever else. Next tank tours will focus on my breeding setups. Goodbye for now.